Good morning and welcome to a special edition of Wake Up Wenatchee Valley. No, I'm not Dan Coons. I'm Eric Granstrom, as it says right there. Uh, we are here today to give a special little preview to the Apple Cup coming up tomorrow in Pullman, the 109th meeting between Washington and Washington State. Coming up a little bit later on the show, we're going to have Cody O'Connell's folks here to talk about Cody's progression. Interestingly, we have two graduates from Wenatchee High School who are on the opposing starting lines for both schools at Washington and Washington State. And right now, I wanted to introduce my guests to start the show today to talk about uh, the kid that's over starting for the University of Washington, who's played a key part in the Huskies' role towards a top 10, and hopefully uh, a lot of Husky fans hoping that uh, they get past the Cougars this week and then have that shot at maybe a national championship. We've got Bud and Susan here who are the parents of Trey Adams. And uh, thank you very much for coming in. And I, we're going to talk about the game. We're going to talk about, you know, Huskies and Cougars and all that stuff. But I wanted to talk about Trey going back, way back. I mean, here we got this kid who's just giant. And he's, you know, they, they told me that uh, as, a, as a freshman getting a chance to start on the offensive line, first time since the 70s for the University of Washington, that thing's like, crazy but let's talk about Trey as, as a baby I want to know because these are big boys that we're talking about with both Cody and Trey how big was he when he was born well he was a little guy when he was born he was only six pounds 13 ounces 21 inches long and, uh, and so just a regular size I mean, just baby. a regular his sister was bigger than he was really when she was born <laughs> yes so at what point did you start to notice that he obviously grew uh, ex exponentially, but I mean, Bud, you're you're a big guy. I mean, mm -hmm. you and I go way back to yeah. Wenatchee Apple Sox days uh, when Bud was our pitching coach with the Apple Sox. And how tall are you? You're six. About six six. Okay. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And uh, you've got that lineage in your family where mm -hmm. you got tall. Mom's tall. She's about six one. Okay. So my dad was about six two or so. Okay. Um, but a lot of big football family actually. I didn't play football. Uh -huh. It was mainly basketball and baseball, but. My mom's side of the family is a big football family, and okay. So, so I, th big I think body I think aside from having the size. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. All right. Um, you're telling but, me before we went on the mm -hmm. air here about uh, you guys actually had to, he had some doctoring that needed done to to get him to where he is today. Well, he snored really bad when he was, <laughs> you know, a little kid, even four, really? even at four and five years old. <laughs> well, so. No we, uh, his doctor, local doctor here, uh, Doctor Newman, suggested was it Doctor Newman? Mm -hmm. Or uh, one of the, yeah, mm -hmm. he suggested that we get his adenoids and tonsils out. Mm -hmm. So this is around five years old, and Dr. Patton here did it. Now, did and, any, aside from the snoring, had he been sick? Had he been sickly mm -hmm. or nope. sinus problems or anything? It just like seemed that? that it seemed out of the ordinary. Uh -huh. I mean, yeah. Mm -hmm. For so, a kid, for a small child to be yeah. snoring, <laughs> tearing this, the paint off the ceiling. Yeah. Uh -huh. mm -hmm. So we, we scheduled the appointment, Dr. Pat, and I remember coming up before the surgery, and he goes, hey, bud, you know, uh, just want you to know, him getting these adenoids and tonsils out, it's going to be like him getting a four-barrel carburetor in his engine. And I didn't really know what he meant, but I kind of put two and two together. And basically, he was going to be getting a lot more oxygen and air and into his system, and he said, watch out, he's going to grow like crazy. And, and I was like, all right, well, you know, we're waiting to see that. So, At What age did he start showing any athletic ability? And, and what, did that, what form did that come in? Well, we always like to remind him of his soccer days <laughs> at four and five. Mm -hmm. uh, we thought he was going to, I thought, I thought he was going to be a soccer star, but that didn't quite uh, pan out. And uh, so yeah, I think it was about third, fourth grade, but he started playing football. Yeah, he was nine, I believe. Mm -hmm. But before that, I, I like to—I always tell the story. We have a—we have a playroom in the house, and uh, I, I had a bunch of balls in there, just all kinds of balls you could think of. And we played battle ball a lot, and and then uh, I decided to show his uh, sister Christy, and he had a you know hit the ball, and so I'd pitch to him, and and the unique thing about it at the time, he was like two, and I put the bat in his in his uh, hands to be a left-handed hitter, and. Mm -hmm. Uh, he listened, and he, I mean, he was so coachable even at that age, uh, just on little things like that. So I, I kind of knew he had something that was pretty unique at that time. Mm -hmm. But he's, he's just always been a coachable kid. And Besides sports, what was Trey as a kid? What, what was, I mean, did, 
hang out with the friends? And was he outside all the time? Was he inside? Mm -hmm. Was he, you know, video games? What kind of kid was he? He loved the outdoors. He loves to hunt, and it's really uh, fortunate because I have brothers. My family, I come from a family of hunters, and so um, they would always take Trey along. And at, at first, especially uh, when he was younger, um, hiking up some of those big hills, I, it's like I had to have candy in my pocket to get him <laughs> to go up those hills. And he's just like, I don't want to do this, Mom. And uh, then he eventually, he just loved it. Now, if he has a break, like his bye weekend this fall was mm -hmm. uh, deer hunting season or weekend, and uh, he went hunting. Okay. And so that is a big passion of his is to get get outside. Yeah, and we'll see from the interview we got to when we went over to Seattle and talked to Trey. Uh, one of the first things he mentioned was, yeah, after the season's over, I'm, I'm going to be doing some duck hunting. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Yep. Yeah. Ray, congratulations yeah. on uh, your season and your career so far as a Husky. Thank you very much. It means a lot. Tell me about that transition from being a Wenatchee Panther to being a Washington Husky. Um, definitely diff different uh, atmosphere and stuff coming from Wenatchee, you know, a smaller town and stuff. But uh, I love the, the purple and gold is what I, can, what I like a lot, you know. Um, just the players and everything is kind of like Wenatchee, kind of a homey feel and stuff like that. So I really love it. How about that uh, transition being a, an offensive player in the Big Nine and, and trying to make that transition to being in the Pac-12? I, I imagine that's a lot of work that goes into that. I mean, yeah, every player's got to do it once you come to college. I mean, you're not going to play in your same high school league. So, um, I mean, just what a player has to do to come to the next level and play is what they got to do, workouts, all that stuff. So. That's been a big part for me is just, you know, working hard and trying to get better every day. So, yeah. So when you uh, went into the college ranks and, and you realize this kind of is a full-time job, I mean, it's year-round yeah. now, right? Yeah, it's year-round. Uh, you get paid real well. Uh, <laughs> no, it's fun. I love all my friends here. And, you know, it's such a great community. And it's so it's close to, close enough to home where I can go home if I need to, but far enough away where I can, you know, do what I want with, with my friends. So, yeah. Um, Perfect school for me, perfect fit. I love, uh, you know, like you said, I got a lot of friends here. So, Did you have any idea, uh, being around this team the last couple of years, that you guys would be doing so well right now? Well, uh, I think it's just, you know, it comes back to practice. Uh, any team has the potential to do well. It's, you know, the details. A lot of stuff Coach Peach, uh, Pete uh, preaches is details, you know, practicing hard. You can practice hard, but you really got to go practice hard. I mean, uh, it's all talk until you do it. So that's our big thing is, you know, doing it. we got to go do it, and I think we've done a good job of that this year. Since you came here and now you're, uh, of course, now in your second year getting a lot of starting time, And uh, what's the biggest progression you think you've made in your game to be able to be where you are? I'm probably just, you know, honing in on my technique. Uh, that's a big part. What our coach uh, stresses is technique and, uh, you know, being physical. So I feel like I've matured in the run game and the pass game a lot and, you know, starting to slow it down a little bit, not be kind of jumpy and just out of control like it was last year. So that's a big part for me. And then uh, just having fun. This all, football is a game. You got to have fun with it. You can't just be, you know, you got to have your, your war paint on every day, but you got to have fun with it. Now, it's interesting that we've got two uh, former Panthers that are starting on the offensive line, one for Washington, one for Washington State as we get ready for the Apple Cup. Do you talk to Cody at all? Uh, not really. I've texted him a few times, but uh, that is pretty cool. I see his stuff on Twitter about him doing really well, and that's cool to see. Um, you know, he's a huge guy. I didn't. I played with him for one year, so that was fun. It's just good to see him doing well, and uh, everyone in the Pac-12. You know, Isaiah playing more and doing the track thing, and you got Cy Sermon down at Montana doing his thing. So it's just fun to see all the Wenatchee guys. You know putting on for the, the hometown is fun. So is Coach Devereaux taking all the credit for you guys? Sorry. <laughs> I put my Jag, uh, Jagla, Coach Jagla and uh, Harley and all those guys text me a lot. So I still keep in contact. I'm trying to go back home soon, you know, after the season, have some fun, you know, duck hunting and all that stuff. So uh, it's just fun to be around uh, these coaches and this, uh, this program. So for the Wenatchee folks that are watching this, uh, no matter how big time you get, is Wenatchee still home? Oh yeah, when Hatchie's always going to be home. Um, you know, I can't. I like it over here. I can't see myself living over here. I really love Wenatchee, and uh, you know, whatever comes my way, if it's, if I have a life after football, um, that's what it'll be. So, uh, you know, it's all uh, it's all up in the air. It's all fun. 
know you guys don't look ahead, but you know we're looking at a possibility for the Apple Cup to be even more special yeah. than than it's been ever. Um, when you were at Wenatchee and going through your your route with the Panthers and everything, did you pay attention to the Apple Cup? Were right. you were you uh, a fan one way or the other? Yeah, I went to most Apple Cups, uh, most UW games, so that was fun. Um, just being uh, being around, you know, guys like Cody and talking trash to him because I knew who's going to Wazoo. I knew I wanted to go to UW, so it's been there for a while. It's going to be fun to go, to go down there and play. Well, Trey, congratulations, and thanks for taking the time to talk to the folks here in Wenatchee. Thank you, guys. All right, there you go, Trey Adams. Oh, your golf game. Wait a minute. What about this golf game? Uh, <laughs> my coach, Brady Koontz. Uh, shout out. Um, it's there. I, I got a little game, but not much. You probably don't have much time to play, do you? No, I need bigger clubs, too. <laughs> so what, at what point did you start getting phone calls and letters and everything else from all the colleges saying, we want this kid to come play for us. Well, it was really early in his in this in the recruiting process. I mean, um, I think it really started locally with with his coaches at the high school and some other um, you know dads around town uh, that played foot, college football. You know, they were they they knew what they were kind of seeing him. Mm -hmm. You know, seeing how he played and like you were saying how he moved and because not the normal person. And, and I honestly was a kind of a normal person in regards to football. I didn't really know what I was looking at either. Sure. So it kind of really happened locally. And then I think when he started, uh, you know, he got, fit, he got to be 15, 16 years old, and uh, he started to do some camps, and uh, he'd call and, you know, Dad, so-and-so talked to me, you know. And I'm like, wow, that's awesome, you know. It just happened so naturally without mm -hmm. um, without a lot of, you know, trying to manipulate the future mm -hmm. for him or, you know, him trying to do that. It just, it just happens so naturally, and that's what has been so refreshing about it. We have a lot to thank the coaches, the Wenatchee High School staff, and especially Coach Devereaux, because mm -hmm. I think it was um, Coach Peterson, especially after he had committed to the University of Washington, and, and it was kind of challenging because it's amazing how programs will still call, mm -hmm. they'll and uh, he gave us the advice, you know, um, ask your coach. And Coach Devereaux um, was so kind as to just to field all those calls and, and really help us in the process. So mm -hmm. it, it really didn't feel like there was that much A pressure. pressure. Right, because Trey had made his decision. He knew what he wanted to do. Yeah, so he, he made that decision pretty early on, didn't he? Well, Susan would probably, and her family would probably say that, you know, when he was a little kid, he was going to University of Washington. Really? Her, her dad played basketball there. Sure. And her brother and uh, aunt went to school there. And so he grew up a Husky fan. Um, do, do Cody and Trey, do they talk at all now? Or, I mean, I know that there's, you know, that dividing line between mm -hmm. schools and things like that. But being both Wenatchee kids, do they talk at all? Or? I think they do. I mean, there's yeah. so many ways to communicate now. Uh, mm -hmm. I, I definitely think they touch base with each other and mm -hmm. and that sort of thing. And I'm so. certain that after the game, regardless of the outcome, that you'll see them come together, together. Yeah. in the yeah. middle of the field. Yeah. And well, thanks for spending the time. We appreciate mm -hmm. it. And getting to know a little bit more about the guy that, other than, you know, left side of the offensive line mm -hmm. from the University of Washington, the fact that uh, we've got the local ties here in Wenatchee and, and that uh, we put a face to what what is behind the kid. Mm -hmm. right. So thank you very much. Yeah. Thank, Thank you. you. Bet. We're going to take a break and come back with more of Wake Up with Anchee Valley and talk to Cody O'Connell's parents. They're going to be here to talk about uh, life as a cougar as we continue on with this Apple Cup preview on Wake Up with Anchee Valley here on the NCW Life Channel. Welcome back once again, Eric Granstrom with the NCW Life Channel, and we are leading up to the Apple Cup and talking about Cougars and talking about Huskies and talking about kids that are doing pretty good that are right here from the Wenatchee Valley. And we've got uh, Cody O'Connell's folks here, Kathy and Jay, and we wanted to talk to you about Cody and about what he was like as a kid and what he's like now and give us Cody's story. Hmm. Um... Has he always been... A big kid? Yes. He's huge. Of course, uh, Coach calls him the continent. Yes. We call him Bubba. <laughs> Bubba. He's Bubba. Yeah, he's Bubba. Okay. Um, How big was he when he was born? Almost 10 pounds. Oh. 
and 24 and a half inches long. He oh. was one of the longest babies on record at Central. <laughs> wow. Um, so he has been always big. Always yeah. been big. Yeah, his doctor figured him to be 6'5", and he kind of undershot that. <laughs> a little bit. Yeah. yeah. A little bit. So do you have, I mean, you guys aren't necessarily tall. I mean, how, where does that come from in your family? Both sides. Both sides. I have great uncles that are seven foot, and uh -huh. um, Jay's family is yeah, I got, six five. Yeah, I got six, a lot six. of, I got twin cousins that are six eleven. Holy cow. So the chances were pretty good, I mean, right from birth. Yeah. You got a big kid on your hands. Yeah. Yep. Well, tell me about him as a kid and what he was like as, a, as little Cody. Was he Bubba all the way? I mean, all the way. All the way. Really? Um, he was mm -hmm. like a year old. I, re I remember um, he's always been super strong, just super strong. And Jay was working in the living room on something and asked Cody to hand him a hammer. And he walked over and picked, over, picked up like a five-pound ball-peen hammer and just... No and problem. Here you go. Oh, yeah. <laughs> you know, and um, he's, he's always been athletic. You know, he started out in swimming and gymnastics, and then he went to hockey, and he didn't like that because you have to, to get mean, and he didn't want to get mean. He wanted to make snow angels on the ice. He's they, just... They put him a goalie, and his attempt at goalie was to lay in front of the goal because the other <laughs> kids couldn't shoot it over the top of him. Sure. And he'd lay in front of the goal and make <laughs> little snow angels. <laughs> yeah. So tell me so, about the family environment for Cody growing up. A sister? Mm -hmm. As a sister, older okay. sister. Okay. Um, we, I say what Kayla lacks in height because she's 5'4", five, 5'5". Five, five. She's, she's a little thing. She makes up for sass and attitude. Yeah. She's and a feisty one. She, she's our feisty one. When Cody was in track in high school and he, we were competing for shot put, there are these, and Cody's superstitious. He has particular things he does. His sister had found him a sweatshirt um, at that time. She had just moved back from Ellensburg. She lived there for a couple of years, and it was a Central Washington University sweatshirt. Well, every meet, Cody wore this sweatshirt. Wouldn't let you wash it, nothing. And he's out there, and anyway, these kids in front of us, <clears throat> Kayla and I were at this meet, and I think we were heading on to state, and they were just complaining. I thought she was going to rip their head off. <laughs> and the next thing I know, um, Cody's track coach um, is like, is that your daughter? I, yeah. <laughs> Sorry, <laughs> you know, and, and she's very, very protective of him, you know, and it, she unleashed the wrath of God on those boys, and it's like, you don't know what it's like, blood, and off she went, and um, she's super protective of him. They're they're very close. I think they talk quite often through the week, you know, oh, yeah. and that's how it should be. And still to this day, she's to like this that. day, oh, yeah. that is, he calls her sissy. He is Bubba. Um, people will say, is that her name? No, no, her name's Kayla, but that's what they call each other. And, mm -hmm. you know, it's through our whole family, it, you know, that's how they have their nicknames. And, and now stuck. he's Uncle Cody. He's yes. Uncle Cody to Tinley. And he'll... Tinley's eight months old now. Just about. Okay. And um, he didn't get to meet her until she was two weeks old because of... Um, Tinley being born and he couldn't get home and uh, practice was starting and they were getting ready for the spring game last year so but he will FaceTime with her and from what Kayla has shared is Tinley's feet will get moving she hasn't quite mastered crawling yet but it's like her head will just start looking for him because she can hear him but he's just he's a good he's a good kid you know I was teasing him last night about this award and I said so are you excited and he says no he goes mom I got work to do and I said, mm -hmm. oh, okay. And he goes, I got a game this weekend, I got the Apple Cup, then we got to get ready for a bowl game. I said, yeah. okay, well then I'm going to be excited for you and, and I'm going to go steal a golf cart and eat some Skittles. <laughs> and he says, mom, no, we don't steal. <laughs> yeah. And okay. He's kind of like, I have time after the, the season to think about this stuff. As parents looking at this kid and, and going through high school, when did you know or did you have any idea, was it coaches and, and recruiters and things like that, that you've got a kid that's going to be able to, to not only go on and play beyond high school, but maybe have that help him with his education, that type of thing? Well, we took him to a lot of the camps 
just to kind of help his skills. And every single camp he went to, he he got an award for something or you know MVP. Even when he was a sophomore, yeah. he, well, probably as a freshman even. And he he just every camp he went to, he was that much better than everybody else. And he just kept improving. So you kind of knew right off. Mm -hmm. So I think it's it's different for dads. <laughs> Um, and I don't, I don't know if it's because Cody's the baby of the family or not, but, I, and I only went on one visit, and it happened to be UW, and it was when Sarkeesian was there, and Cazetto was the O-line coach, and it was the most horrific experience for me. They had him down to his skivvies, and they were measuring him and weighing him, and I thought I was panhandling my kid out there. It really <laughs> disturbed me, you know, and he looked at me, and, you know, I have deer in the headlights and he's like mom it's a job I'm interviewing for a job mm -hmm. okay if you're okay with this you know and and I didn't go on any more visits it, it really, because of that it really bothered me but so Jay, none, of the other, none of the other colleges ever did that mm -hmm. you know and it was you know and even when we went to that visit I've always I've always tried to be mindful okay what questions do I ask what questions don't I ask and Jay happened to be out of town with my mom that weekend, and so we're calling him on our way over to UW. And I'm like, okay, what what questions do I ask? Because Cody, he doesn't say much. Mm -hmm. You know, he's a pretty quiet kid. And you know, the next thing I know is we're going up to lunch, and they have the six person golf cart, and Cody's in the very back facing. And all of a sudden, you, he bounces himself out on this gravel road, and he's like grabbing his knee, and he's oh. just. And I'm like, get off the ground. You know, get off. And he looks at me and he winks. And I'm like, are you? and here's all these these coaches. Oh, my God, he fell off the golf cart. And it's like, get off the ground. I'm going to beat you. You know, and he's just giggling. And it's like, finally, he hops up, gets on the cart. And he goes, well, I'm better now. So he goes down to Pullman <coughs> his junior year, and nobody knew he was coming? Well, what, what happened? No. Jay was with that one. Yeah, so we drove through. It was February. So we drove through some just horrendous weather. And I almost slipped off the road a couple different times. Pulled up, and there's this older lady behind the table as you walk in to check in. And told me, you know, this is Cody O'Connell. He's here to, for junior days. And she looks through the deal and says, not on the list. Okay, you know, basically she's telling us, you got to leave. And I'm like, no, I don't think so. We just drove through some terrible stuff. And talking to Cody, and she says, well, you didn't RSVP. And I was like, I'll kill you. <laughs> and so we're, we're sitting there, and I'm arguing with the lady. You know, he got a letter, and it's, you know, needs to be here. And one of the coaches happened to be in the background. And he turns around and goes, Cody, oh, yeah. And he came over and told her, yeah, just write him out of the sled. He's, he's, he's welcome here. And so that's how we got in. Is, but she was going to kick us out. Send you back like, to what Nancy had Yeah. He didn't oh, ask us to mad. RSVP. Yeah. yeah. You know, he'll tell you, it was in the fine print. It was. It was in the very bottom, but it was like, Cody. <laughs> so the rest of that day, tell me about the rest of it, though, on that visit. So we walked in and uh, <clears throat> just kind of hung out. And the uh, we were watching the whole junior day thing and watching a couple guys work out and different things. And one of the coaches comes over and grabs Cody and says, hey, do you want to come with me? And... All right, and I'd never been to one of these things. It was Cody's first one. So I stood there, and they took off, and a couple minutes later, he comes back and says, are you not coming with us? I'm like, oh, <laughs> okay. So they led us back through the whole building, and we went up through, and uh, they led us into an office. Well, the coaches were so new there, they still had everything in boxes. They hadn't even unpacked yet. And there was no name on the door, so I didn't know who we were meeting. And finally, we go in, and it, it happens to be Leach. So he's telling us all sorts of stories. And, um, he has great stories. Mm -hmm. He does have good stories. <laughs> you know, I, I could tell you, but it might be a little inappropriate right now. But <laughs> <laughs> so we're sitting there, and he's talking away, telling the story. And he says, well, I'd really like you to come here and play for us. And then that was pretty much it, and we left. So Cody and we walked back out, and we're all sitting in this auditorium while we're listening to everybody talk. And, and Cody looks over and says, did I get an offer? I'm like, I think so. He says, well, I'm not sure. They got me second guessing. I'm like, I don't know either. Right? <laughs> so after the deal, he says, hey, can we go back up and talk to one of the coaches? 
So we wandered back up through and met with uh, Coach McGuire, his position coach, and asked me, he said, oh, well, heck yeah, we want you to come here to play. you got a full scholarship. So if he's not playing football, he's not gaming, what would Cody, on a day off, if Saturday when it's in the wintertime or whatever, what would Cody rather be doing? Sitting at home watching TV. <laughs> <laughs> Honestly, yes. Yeah. So he's no different than any other kid. <laughs> <laughs> and it's Cody, clean up your mess. Uh-huh. Cody, it's, it's, it's developing around you, you know. But mom, I'm so busy. Really? Yeah. You know, well, um, they are. It, they go in at like 6.30 for workouts. <clears> and then they're, they, he doesn't get back to his apartment until at least after 9 o'clock. Because they're, you know, classes, workouts, conditioning. meetings, conditioning, you know. People don't understand how busy those kids are. Yeah. And, well, you it's, know, a, it's a job. It's it a, a job. huge job. And then they, you know, every other kid, you know, if they're like, well, a kid come home for summer. He gets two weeks, if he's lucky. Yeah. So they don't the bowl like. bowl game really screws it up. Yeah. yeah. At least for mom. Yeah. But, uh, well, we won't. Put a juju. We won't talk about no. that yet. It's, it's got one more game, and then one more game, and then one, one more game. game. <laughs> one more game. Well, thank you very much for coming in and, thank you for and telling us more about Cody and and the good story that uh, is developing. And and I don't I don't think there's any other high school in the state that can say they have a starter at a Division One school on both sides of their state. One at Washington, one at Washington State. Cody O'Connell and Trey Adams doing that from Wenatchee High School. So that says a lot about what happens right here in the little Wenatchee Valley.